Coach, obviously, it's a it's big for the players to kind of rest and, and recuperate. How about the staff? And what are you guys doing this week to kind of maybe, you know, find your center a bit? Yeah. Yeah, we're like a yoga studio, right? It's a very holistic this week. Um, well, obviously, we're, we're going to jump on Arkansas prep. Uh, again, you mentioned it gives us chances to spend more time with younger guys, uh, more developmental guys that haven't played a whole lot, kind of get back to fundamentals, techniques. Obviously, you're doing self-scout. Uh, coaches were on the road recruiting, though, for you know the next two days. It's, uh, school has fall break, so we'll finish our practice today, give the guys Thursday, Friday, and Saturday off, and then uh, coaches go on the road recruiting. And then, you know, it's a little – it's a little more relaxed because you don't have a game on Saturday, but yeah, there's still plenty of work to be done. Halfway through the season now, uh, how would you kind of assess where your defense is at, and is there kind of any points of emphasis that you want to see them kind of fix or work on heading forward to this kind of home stretch of the year? Uh, I mean, obviously there's there's drives, there's quarters or halves we can point to. We can say that we're executing at a pretty high level, and we you know, we can play we're capable of playing good defense, and then there's uh, just the opposite of that, right? And there's drives and halves we can point to where we don't look like a very good defense. And so, obviously, uh, when you get an off week like this, you're you're doing a lot of self-scout. Um, you're being highly critical of, of yourselves as coaches, you know, what you're calling, how you're teaching it, uh, maybe tweaks you can make. And so that that's that's what a bye week is used for. But uh, gets back to gets back to fundamentals and, and techniques, right? The game of football, any phase, right, comes down to – Blocking, tackling, right? Putting your eyes in the right position, reacting accordingly to what your key tells you. And so uh, that's what this bye week gives us an opportunity to kind of get back and reinforce. Speaking of self scouting, when you go back and, and watch the family of Western Michigan, what do you think about Kevon Lee and what he provided for the offense from what he went out and just his role in the bowl? I think I think every time Kevon's got, I think he had one carry that went from minus yards there in that last game on a, on a short yardage. And he'd probably like to have him back and keep it up inside and kind of bounced into maybe an edge pressure. But other than that, I think if you look at the whole season, every time he's got carries, they've been they've been some positive yardage runs and a couple explosive ones and got out there. So, you know, he's a bigger back. He's got big, thick leg, lower half on him. He's difficult to bring down and tackle. And those are kind of backs you kind of need in this league because usually you're playing a good defense every week and uh, you got to be able to break some tackles because there's some big, strong, physical defensive linemen and linebackers. Between uh whether it was after the game or, you know, you're available in Memphis the other night or the teleconference. I'm not going to ask you about any injury updates. Don't worry. You're, you're still oh, I'm there. Oh. But uh, in the event that, uh, you, you know, Mike has to start uh, in favor, what makes you kind of confident in him, you know, to, to lead your guys under center? Because we've seen, obviously, flashes of him, but what makes you confident in him? Well, before I get to that, get to that, in the event you ask a roundabout question about, <laughs> right, I'll give you an answer. But no, I, the reality is, is no matter what position you play, no matter what position you play, it's not unique to the quarterback, no matter what position you play, right, whether you are the starter or not, you must prepare as you are the starter, okay? And so I have full faith and confidence. Mike's, Mike has taken advantage of every opportunity he's, he's had this season, right? He's scored several touchdowns. He's distributed the balls for several touchdowns when he's been in. He saw increased action last week. If, if he had... All right, if he has to play additional snaps, we have no reason to believe he won't perform the exact same himself. You've had some guys out in recent weeks. You know, who are some of the guys who are going to be trending in the right direction you expect to get back in the next week or so? Well, that's the beautiful thing about a bye week, right? Everyone's trending in the right direction because it gives you have time to get additional rest and recovery for guys. Again, there's some guys who played a lot of snaps that were kind of uh, limiting limiting their reps this week, but while we spend more time investing it in the younger guys, um, anytime you go through a full season, you're going to need depth. You're going to need guys to play more than maybe you initially thought going into the season. So that's been good for us and our coach and staff to to get to spend time with the young guys. But simply put, I'd say everyone's trending in the right direction right now. What's your initial impressions of Arkansas? What have you thought about them so far? Well, I know that obviously the quarterback is a great player, uh, tailback too. I think they're playing. They're playing good on both sides of the the football. Uh, they've been in some close games against some really good teams. Um, I say they play Alabama this week, so we'll get another film to watch that. But um, I all probably think they probably felt very similar to us, right? I think going in last week, we were both on on three game losing streak, and uh, they played a heck of a game. They just 
came up out of play short, but really talented football team, and we're going to have our hands full. But obviously, uh, can't say enough about K.J. Jefferson and Rocket Sanders, what they do on that side of the ball. And then obviously, uh, new defense scheme, Barry Odom gone, uh, but they're playing at a really high level, and they did a good job bringing in some difference makers in the transfer portal. Obviously kind of a double-A short here because he can't play this year, but um, your thoughts on Sadu and what you've seen from him in practice and kind of the versatility he brings, whether he's going to be a flex tight end or an outside receiver. Just Yeah, I'm, for every, everything I've seen, I'm, I'm glad we I'm glad we were able to get him out of the portal. He's going he's gonna to be a, a mismatch and a really good player for us. So glad he's in our program. This morning we asked you about Chris, and you talked about, yes, he has game planning, but what kind of experience does he gain running a bunch of different offenses as a scout team quarterback? I think the biggest thing if you're a quarterback is – you get a, you get a, you get to have a starting defense go against you every day, right? So you feel the pass rush around you. You get to throw against different looks. Um, now a lot of times you're going off a card, and we want the ball to go a specific place to test something on the defense. But I I, I got this from Coach Leach, and it's common sense, but it's it's genius. In a lot of places, you stand your your true freshman quarterback over there behind the offense, and he's getting he's getting mental reps, you know, while the offense practices, and he meanwhile he's not doing a thing. And Coach Leach would say, "Well, that's about the craziest thing in the world, right? He's going to be, he's going to develop and be a better player, actually participating in practice, throwing the ball every rep." And so, and fortunately for us, Chris is the kind of guy who, hey, whatever helps the team is, what can I do to give the defense a better look or whatever it takes to help prepare the team for Saturday. And so it's it's fun to coach those guys. How have you kind of seen Chris develop, you know, throughout this year through practices and, and all that good stuff? Yeah, he he looks more muscled up, stronger. His arm is incredibly lively. Uh, had a He popped a couple of runs on the defense a week or two ago. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but uh, so mobile in the pocket, but I think we I think we had a quarterback draw look or something like that off an empty. He, he took it for a touchdown against the defense, and so uh, that kind of excites you because to know you got a, a young quarterback waiting in the wings who got a real strong, lively arm, but then also – has some movement abilities, make plays with his legs. Uh, I, that kind of excites you. Not just for this team, but yourself recruiting. How timely is it that junior college ball is in full swing right now? High school ball is kind of reaching a peak. You get to see something at everything right now. Yeah, there's nothing like an in-person evaluation, right? And you're not allowed to have contact with uh, with recruits right now. It's purely an evaluation period. So you either get to watch them play a game or you know, go stand out there practice. And obviously every coach is going to want to watch a game. So it gives us – I think we're going to see every single junior college game on Thursday night, and then obviously we'll be at a handful of select high school games on Friday. And so it's a, it's a good good thing for a coach. You mentioned uh, you one more film to watch, but you don't put anything else on film this week. You know, can you take advantage of this bye week and maybe tinker a little bit, maybe come up with some exotic pressures and kind of what you thought behind that? Uh, I think you can – I think you can overdo it, right? All of a sudden, you you try to reinvent the wheel, and your guys don't have many reps built up doing that. And next thing you know, you're asking them you're asking them to play in the most competitive league in all college football, doing something they've only practiced for a week or a week and a half. That seems like a recipe for disaster. And so, I think it probably more importantly, you try to get back to the fundamentals, the points of emphasis, and the and the base things you do, right? And you really try to clean up. Hey, listen, we're we're having mistakes on X, Y, or Z. We got to get back to cleaning those up so we can actually execute the coverage or the pressure or whatever it may be. That's specific to defense. Obviously, on offense, same thing. Hey, these are our base core schemes, and when we execute them, we're we're efficient and, and stay ahead of the chains and create explosive plays. But when we have breakdowns in X, Y, or Z, leads to negative plays. All of a sudden, you come in on a bye week and go, "Hey, you know what? So and so at this other school's." They're they're being real effective doing this. We're just going to put this in and get really good at it. Uh, probably not going to be a real positive result for you if you think you're only going to practice something for about three, four days and then execute it in this league. With Jordan last last Jordan Freddie getting their first touchdowns uh, last week. Could you kind of see a little uncovered seven practice and yeah, hopefully many more to come. It's funny funny how if you're a receiver, right? If you if you catch it when it when it's thrown to you and you score a touchdown, quarterbacks have a way of wanting to go back to you. 